What's up guys, it's River, and today we're gonna learn how to get the most out of your Canon M50 Mark II. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to set up your Canon M50 in the exact settings that you need to use to get the most out of this camera. So grab your Canon M50, sit back and follow along. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is set up our camera. Now if the shot looks a little dark, I apologize. I just wanna make sure you guys can see the camera, but also I want you guys to see this monitor without it getting too bright because you need to be able to see those menu settings. So the first thing that you need to know about your camera is right here is the shutter button. If you half press this, your camera will focus. I'll show you guys how to do that later. If you full press it, it will take a photo. And next to it is the movie record button. If you press this, it will start recording a movie. If you hit it again, it will start recording a movie. And next to it is the mode dial and the on off button. So naturally, you know, as you may have guessed, you wanna keep your camera button in the on position so your camera's actually on. Shocker, I know. Uh, welcome to Welcome to the channel, we like to educate. And with that, next to it is the mode dial. Now this mode dial will put your camera in different settings, but the only two that you really need to know is the M setting, and right above it is this setting right here that has the little camera icon. This is how you're gonna switch between photo mode and video mode. So when you go to the M setting, you're now in manual mode. And this is where you're gonna be able to pick all of your options, where you have complete control over your camera. So when you're in manual mode, you wanna hit the menu button, which is here on the back, it says menu, so you guys will to find it right away. And then from there, you'll be, in, you'll be brought to this menu, and the first thing you'll see is in, on page one is image quality. You wanna mi middle click the button, and you'll get to this. So right here at the top, you have RAW and JPEG. Now RAW is basically the high quality, super extra crash, whatever fancy term you wanna use, but that is the professional file format and JPEG is the consumer for everyday people. So if you're somebody that wants to do a lot of editing, you wanna do professional work with your camera, I absolutely recommend shooting RAW. And you have two options for RAW, one is RAW and then C-RAW. Basically, they're, they give you the same quality but C-RAW takes up less space because it compresses the file where RAW takes up more space because it doesn't compress the file. The real place where you're gonna see a change or where it's gonna matter is when you're editing them. If you don't have a very good computer, it's gonna take longer for it to uncompress the RAW for you to use versus RAW where the file hasn't been compressed so your computer's gonna have an easier time with it. If you've got a good computer, I would just say go with compressed RAW. And below that, you have JPEG. Now with JPEGs, this is the consumer format. So if you're not planning on doing any kind of editing, I recommend only using JPEG. RAW is just gonna be overkill. And plus you'll get way better colors right out of the camera with JPEG. But with JPEGs, they don't really take up a lot of room, nor are they ha heavy to handle for your phone or your computer. Uh, simply put, you should just shoot the highest format of JPEG. Why shoot anything less? Because there's really no advantage to it. So I just recommend going all the way to the JPEG uh, thing on the left here and picking L with the curve next to it and middle clicking and you have that selected. And now it might seem like, well, that was easy to do, and honestly, it is that easy. But the next thing that you need to do is actually set up your focus mode. So the next thing you wanna do is, you wanna go back to your main, uh, your main screen, and if you don't know how to do that, you can either hit menu or just tap your shutter button. So if you're in your menu and you just hit the shutter button, it'll take you to your main screen. Right up here top, you'll see a little Q, Q icon right here at the top right of your screen. So if you hit that Q icon, it will open up your quick menu. And right here at the top left of your screen, you'll see this little uh, autofocus method. Now, believe it or not, the default method is actually the best, but I want to show you guys anyways in case you have it set to something else. So basically, you wanna hit the cube button, go to, go to autofocus modes right here, and a bunch of them will come up. You actually wanna select this down here with face tracking, and at the same time, if you tap the info button right here, can enable or disable eye tracking now. If you've got a Mark I, it will not have eye tracking, but if you've got a Mark II, make sure to keep that eye tracking enabled. And the next thing we wanna do is let's set up video because video is a lot more complicated for setting up on this camera. So you wanna take your mode dial, switch over to the camera icon, and you'll be greeted by the screen. Now what you wanna do is click here, choose mode, and now you'll have two. I already have mine set to manual, but you'll basically have movie auto exposure or movie manual. Now this is entirely up to you. If you're somebody that wants to control every aspect of your video image, I recommend picking manual, otherwise auto does a pretty good job at just making it easier so you can just hold the camera, film around, and it'll just adjust all the settings for you. Um, 
If you're someone that's just like a hobbyist and not too bothered by any of this, I recommend going with Movie Auto. Otherwise, manual is the way to go. And once you have that picked, hit the menu screen again, and again, you'll be brought to this menu. But this time you'll notice that it is very, very different. Now, in case you were wondering, you can actually pick your shooting mode right from the menu, but we've already done that, so, but in case you needed to change it later, that's how you would change it. And right below that is movie record quality. Now you've got a whole lot of different options. So the first thing you're gonna do is movie record size. Now this is going to give you a few options. Naturally, most people will want to shoot on 4K, but 4K is not the best quality. So what you actually want to do is shoot on Full HD 2398. And this will give you the best image quality. But if you want to shoot in slow-mo, you want to go to uh, 20, you want to go to FHD 59.94, and this will give you uh, full HD with slow motion, but you will have to slow it down in post. But in case you wanted slow motion in camera where you don't have to slow it down later, you actually want to go down here to high frame rate, click, uh, middle click the button and click enable. And from here, now you will be shooting in 1280 by 720 at 120 frames per second. This is phenomenal for getting four times the slow motion. So if you're into that kind of stuff, highly recommend turning this mode on and having a bit of fun with it. But because we're going to set up the rest of the camera, I'm actually gonna disable this for now, and I'm gonna set it up to be full HD uh, 23.98, which is the cinematic mode. By the way, if you're watching this video, chances are you just bought a brand new Canon M50 and you wanna make sure you get the most out of this camera. In that case, make sure to check out the Camera Boost course in the link down below. In this course, I'm gonna show you how to take your beginner or entry-level camera and make it perform like a professional camera. This course is not only going to save you time, but also money because I'm gonna show you that you don't need to spend a ton of money to get amazing results. I'm gonna show you everything you need to know from top to bottom. I'm gonna show you shooting tips, lighting, editing, everything that you need to know to make your work look professional. So if you're interested, make sure to check out the Camera Boost course in the link down below. Now, once that's set up, the next thing you wanna do is actually go back to the main menu. Uh, in case you're on a different page, just hit M and make sure you go to page one and you wanna hit sound recording. So I'm actually just gonna use the buttons here. So sound recording and you'll see right up here top, uh, you'll see sound recording auto. So now you wanna middle click this button and actually pick manual. Oops, I hit disable, but you wanna pick manual. And now what you'll actually see is, if you look at the bottom here, you'll see these lines going up and down. That's actually the audio level. And now you can see they're all the way to the right and that's not good for audio recording. So you wanna go down here to record level and actually lower it. Now this will depend on where you are, how loud the noise that you're dealing with is. But basically if you wanna just go down here and just click the, and click the middle button and then just hit left and drag it all the way down here. And I'm gonna have this really, really low because I'm so close to my camera. But right here, as you can see, these little lines at the bottom are not going past the 12. You wanna make sure it never goes past 12. Otherwise, your audio will sound scratchy and bad. So right here, this sounds good. I would recommend doing this every single time before you record audio with this camera. And once you have that set up, you are good to go. And the next thing I wanna show you guys are two really, really, really important things that you need to know about setting up this camera. The first thing is you wanna to go to the menus and you wanna go all the way to uh, page eight. And right here you'll see IS image stabilization mode. Now this is specifically for video. So if you're using video, you wanna middle click the button and you wanna turn IS mode on. And right underneath there it says digital IS. You wanna to go to enable. Do not turn on enhance. enhance is not very good. It crops in your image and it kind of makes it look all wobbly. So you just wanna make sure you click enable and from that you will get much, much smoother video. So the next thing I wanna show you guys is a very, very important setting for video and specifically for videos, but if you're shooting JPEGs, this will also matter. This is to shoot, set up your custom picture profile. So you wanna to go to page three and you, will, and you wanna go down to picture style. Now, initially it'll give you auto picture style and if you're just shooting casually, you're not too bothered about things, keep it at auto and the camera will do a very, very good job. But in case you're somebody that wants to do a little bit of post editing and you wanna tweak your colors down the line, this is how to get the most out of your camera 
uh, and the base profile. So you wanna go down to user defined one, hit this thing and it'll take you into the main menu. You wanna hit picture style and you actually wanna pick the neutral or faithful. Uh, they'll both work really, really well. I'm gonna go with neutral. And then from there, you wanna go down and you wanna adjust your sharpness. So if you, you wanna take your sharpness strength all the way to zero, neutral will already give you zero, but you wanna make sure sharpness is all the way down. Now you wanna go down to contrast. She turned this down to negative two. Some people like it at negative three, I like it at negative two. And you wanna to go to saturation, and again, negative two. And color tone is something you just wanna leave alone. You never touch your color tone. And once you have just that set up, once again, it is um, just a very, very simple, just picture style, neutral, uh, sharpness all the way down to zero, contrast, negative two, saturation, negative two. And once you have that set up, it's super simple. And with these profiles, you will get much more dynamic range and a much more flat image so that if you wanna do a little bit of color grading in post-production, you will have that flexibility. But if you do not plan to do any kind of color correction, I actually find auto or standard works amazing. All right guys, and the last thing I wanna show you is super, super helpful. So you wanna go into menu and you actually wanna to go to page eight over here and you'll see an option called shutter button function for movies. Now this is super useful. If you go into that and now you'll see like a bunch of these options. If you go into fully press and you change that to start, stop, record, you actually don't have to use this tiny little button. You can actually use the main button to start recording your movies which is super helpful because I really don't like this tiny little button for shooting uh, video. So once again, shutter button, function, start and stop. And then also uh, make sure you uh, leave the half press option to meter and uh, servo AF. This will help you uh, manage autofocus. So if you half press it, it will grab autofocus. And then if you full press it, it will record. Well guys, that's pretty much it for the Canon M50 setup guide. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content. As always, if you guys have any questions, hit me up in the comments down below and I'll make sure to get back to every single one of you. See you in the next video. Peace.